Now this is a, an array example. And uh, just generally talking about arrays, we've seen these a little bit in the past. We're gonna focus on a lot of them in the next probably two weeks. An array is a list of numbers. For example, two, five, seven, nine could be a list of strings. So it doesn't have to be numbers. Um, it can be a collection of items, um, collection of images, a, a collection of data cells. Um, so it um, opens up a lot of different, uh, different areas. Now, if I go into Excel, I got two, five, seven, and nine. So we got four numbers here, don't we? The length of this list array is four. So we've got four items. The numbering starts at zero. So this would refer to um, the index. This is the zeroth entry, the first entry, second entry, and third entry. What? We do with arrays. And we're going to see this is the same with um, uh, when we get over to the, uh, the max. Um, the index starts to zero. I have no clue why it starts to zero, but they all do that. <clears throat> so if you want to loop through this, you don't go from one to four. You go zero to three. So you have to go one less than your length. Now I dropped on a spinner, spinner control here, and um, I'm not really sure if it's located here somewhere. If it is, I was having trouble finding it. Don't know where it is, but if you do the, um, the under the palette here, if you do the search, and you start typing spinner, then you're going to find the spinner control. Now let me uh, run this and show you what a spinner control looks like. This pops up here, and uh, you see there's a little uh, triangle over here, a little drop down. If I click that, then it drops down with a uh, list of items. <clears throat> you can do blue, and then it changes that to blue. So that's what a spinner, spinner is. Okay, so I've dropped a spinner on there. Um, no, nah, not yet. <clears throat> now, up here in the, um, this over in code, main activity Java, under, um, our public class, uh, main activity, I have this line here. This, uh, notation here, the brackets, 
you have your uh, data type and then your brackets and then values equals. This is declaring a, an array. Now this is populating the array with red, blue, and yellow. Now these are these are our strings. I could um, have integer nums equals one, two, three. So whatever your data type is, you put first, and then you uh, have the brackets to indicate it's an array, and then if you want, you can populate it. Doesn't mean you can't change it later on. That's how you do it. If you add double, you put double there. I've never created an array of Booleans, but I'm assuming it works. Uh, flags equals true false true now what what um what's the index on this Red um, zero, and this would be one, and this would be two. Now let me um, let me throw another button on here. Oh, I got my spinner still there. And throw a text view on there. Now this button I'm going to have just print a value off of our array just so you see how it works. So we change this to say uh, print a value from the array. Come over here. And uh, public void button print array element. UV. And um, let's see, what was that? An edit text I added? Didn't give it a name. Come over here. Oh, it's text view. I'll call it TV underscore num. I don't know if I got a num one, but I'll say num two. Then I got text view. Uh, T two equals um, text view r dot id dot TV num two. Oh, I do, don't I? Okay, find. Thanks. TV num2. Now, this is a string. It's called a string array. And it's called values. So down here, if I said t2 dot set text and uh, values zero, not sure if I need a two string there. This is button print array elements. So I come over here and I'll set this button. Be on click. Button print array element. Uh, cancel. Forgot to set my constraints. There we go. 
now run it. Keep waiting for it to pop up. If I click this, see how it prints red? So that's how you can access an uh, individual um, array element. And we're going to see, um, probably not today, um, but who knows, if you finish project early, then maybe we'll have time. Um, but we'll actually look at populating arrays. By the way, um, 0, 1, 2 is our index. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. You know, if you have more... Of course, it's even more. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can loop through these. And we'll see how to do that. Okay, so we got our array of uh, strings. Um, and they're called values. Now up here at the top, since I was going to use the spinner in a couple of different places, I didn't want to redeclare it each time. So I just said spinner sp1. That's the same as what we did down here like text view t1 if you know you're going to use it in several places it may be beneficial to put it up top um liam i think you were asking about that last class or class before that can't you just put it at the top so you don't have to keep redeclaring it oh yeah yeah and you can you know that's when you when you clear it up here it's global to the um all the procedures, all the functions. So I declared that. I also declared the array adapter. And notice we tell it the data type here. And um, that's curious. That's a sad. Sad, yeah. I don't even know what that stood for. String adapter, S adapt. Um, I <laughs> wonder why that works, though. I would have thought I needed a space here. Obviously, I'm wrong. But uh, array adapter is the type. And we're saying it's going to be a string. You put double in here if you had a double. You put an integer in here if you had an integer. Then down in our on create, this is where it creates our, uh, creates our application. After it does the set content view, what I do is I make the connection between the um, spin list of colors. What's that? Well, I named that this. I named the spin list of colors. So that's our, our spin control. So I make the connection here between this name and that. Um, Uh, did some planes. Let me get rid of that. Here is where you're making the the connection. You got your um, s string adapt. Sad point. Um, equals new array adapter string. So this is creating an instance of it. You got this Android .r .layout .dot Simple spinner item. This would be um, this would always be the same. Although we're going to see two other types, we'll use the same concept in future classes. And then notice over here, I put values. The values comes um, from our name right up here. Might have been bad to say values, but um, that's what that is. Okay, so we um, we create a spinner or make the connection between uh, this uh, name and the spinner that's on the form. Um, we have a create a array adapter where we load in all those strings. Yeah. So this is like a, a special type of array. You can think of it that way. And then I make a connection between my spinner control, which is SP1, and I set the adapter to this string adapter. Okay. 
So we've created our array. We'll kind of put it into a new structure called an array adapter. Um, and then we're, we're making the association. We're dumping it into the spinner so it'll populate it. Populates uh, spinner uh, control. Now, if I want a new item, I can come up here and type um, purple like that. Just by adding it here, If I run this, do the drop down, you see I have purple. The benefit of this uh, type of concept is that you could have uh, 50 items here. And you don't have to have all 50 showing your screen at one time. You can do the drop down and they can choose whichever they want. You know, I don't know how you do that with the mouse, but yeah, you um, would use your finger to, you know, scroll. So you want to add another number to that? Um, where at? On the numbers part? No, no, this has nothing, actually nothing to do with it. I was just showing you how would you declare other data types. Now you got me curious. I guess with the mouse, I don't think it works very good. There it is. With the mouse, you hold down your mouse wheel. Now, if you're doing this in real life, you have your finger, you know, you just... Right. Hmm. Now, um, this next bu button, this button that says button, uh, let me change what that's uh, retrieve. So um, after you select one of these, then uh, I'm going to have, have a button here to click that, and it'll just retrieve the fact that we um, picked a color, for example. Now here I declare a text view, T1, and that's at TV num1. That is, um, that is this text view right here. So I named it TV underscore num1. And I declare a new variable called uh, S1. It's a string. And how you retrieve, um, you see I got SP1. And I say um, get selected item to string. So this will take the selected item, whichever one they've picked, and it'll, um, the two string uh, gets like that, and the two string changes it to a string and assigns it to S1. So whatever color they pick, if they pick red, then uh, S1 will say red. Now here, I originally just started out um, creating an example to show you in class here where I just printed out the result to the text, the um, 
to the text field um, or text view. But then I changed it and I thought, well, I'll show you an equals. If S1 dot equals red, then I say you pick red. Else if S1 dot equals um, purple, I think was another color I had. T1 dot set text equals. Try it again. Um, beginning parentheses, you picked purple. Like here, here, I do the drop down and I choose purple. Click retrieve, it says you pick purple. Now, if I pick any other color, like blue, it just simply says blue because that's what I'm doing right up here, is I'm just writing it out to the text field. I have a question. Uh huh. It's pretty dumb, but. Uh, if you wanted to put, like, you pick blue, would you also put an else if statement as well? You could. Yeah, you could have as many as you want there. Okay. Now, um, there's many things after you've uh, did the SP1 that you can do, and we'll get uh, to a lot of these. But you see there's a lot of, um, a lot of items you can uh, program in. Probably year, years worth of material. Just how, how do you handle everything here? Um, Professor Jones. Uh huh. Uh, is there just a question that got me thinking? Um, is there a way that we could do where it automatically says you picked and then it would call whatever string? So, like the sp1.get selected item by three string just displays mm -hmm. what name it is. So, is there any way that you could do like you pick and then it displays whatever color it is so that it, you wouldn't have to type out all those little statements? Um, yeah. Yeah, like if I had... Oops. If I had S2 here, and I say S2 is equal to you picked... I put a space there. Now we're retrieving the color right here. So I could say uh, S2 is equal to S2 plus. That concatenates it together. Okay. And then S1 is our, our color. And now if I just set that to S2 here. I'll comment that out. So now if I run it. I give a break in space. What? Like where it's the you pick space parentheses. And you yes. have a beginning parentheses up at where you uh and S2. S2. Oh. I wonder where did that come from? Okay. You picked. Good on. And then the entire talk is very little. That's the best thing that ever happened in programming is a little red squiggly. If I choose yellow and choose retrieve, so you picked yellow. That's cool. So. Now you could even uh, program this such that um, this button, this right here, is behind. Um, and I'd have to probably play with this to see which, which it is. Um, I'm assuming it's on, so let me uh, choose on. What did I say? Start with on. On click. On choose. Let's choose on. Uh, let's choose on click. Uh, what 
which one was it? Get item. Now, I don't know what on click means for the spinner. I'm not sure if that means after I've picked it or if that means when I first click it. So it might not work. Uh, obviously, didn't work. Uh, get rid of that then. On choose. On select. And look like it's one of the default ones, which means I probably had to program it separately, so we won't worry about that. Mm. That makes sense on what that retrieve does. Yes. Now, um, you don't have to have uh, just um, strings, as we indicated. You can um, you could have other values up here, like numbers. It's still the same idea. And of course, it helps if I didn't do string again. Uh, integer values equals three, five, eight. Jeez. I better have him come up here. <laughs> he's, on, he's on it today. Okay, so um, now I'm going to have another another spinner. So I'll come over here to my palette. Let's choose spinner, which is right here, and I'll drag and drop it, I guess, down here. And I'll call this, get rid of some of those attributes. Um... Well, that's weird. What happened to my attribute? JC, what happened to my app attribute? That's that's interesting. My ID is right there, but uh, when I say view less attributes, my ID has disappeared now. Never really there. It could be. Okay, that's going to bother me why that disappeared. ID is one of them you want there, but anyway, spin the numbers. So I called spin the numbers. Okay, so then over my code, I'm just kind of copying here. SP2. I'm going to have another array adapter. Integer. And I call it I adapt, uh, integer adapter. <laughs> Can't spell. And then down here, sp2 equals spinner, find view by ID, r.id.spin the numbers. I'm going to have my same line here, new array adapter, integer, this, comma, android.r.layout, 
dots, simple spinner item, comma, and what I call it, I values. Yeah, I values. Then I got sp2 dot set adapter. I adapt. Now I shouldn't need to get the item here. Let's see if I got a mistake anywhere. Of course, I didn't do the constraints. It's up here. But if we do the drop down, you see I got 1, 8, and 13. Now I'm going to print this off so you have this code. Um, the uh, project is for you to um, create three, three arrays. So you have three spinner controls. And then you'll have, um, uh, with appropriate prompts, uh, where they tell them to pick this, this, and this. And, you know, that probably would be too bad just to concatenate them down at the bottom. And just display it in one text view. You chose this, this, and this. Now I wonder how I can print this. That's the hard part. Is there a file for you? There is. Um, but it'll print it um, with a larger font, and that's why it comes out with all those pages. So we take a WordPad. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to change my font because uh, it seemed to work out pretty good. There we go. Three copies. That should be a lot smaller. No, just one main activity, and you'll have three spinner controls you populate, and then they'll uh, you'll have them so select so you'll pull information from those. So choose like a choose two strings and integer type of deal. Yeah. 